welcome back to another year of bold predictions and previews for the season. We're going to go ahead and get started here with Tanner and Sam. Guys, go ahead and give me your preview on what's going to happen with Tennessee and Appalachian State. Well, I'm thinking first things first, Appalachian State is not a pushover. I mean, people are come to expect that. Uh, a lot of people, when they first hear the name Appalachian State, they like to think back to obviously the biggest upstate college football history, 2007 against Michigan. So you know when you're playing a team like Appalachian State, Appalachian State specifically, rather, that you're going to get good tests. You're not going to get someone who's going to be a typical uh, cupcake. And they're most certainly uh, they most certainly improved from where they were back in that uh, Michigan game. They were FCS, of course, and they have moved up to FBS. This is going to be their third season in the FBS. Uh, they're coming off a fantastic year last year, 11-2, uh, uh, finished second in the Sun Belt. Had a very competitive year. Uh, it just it, they're, they're returning a lot of starters, both from offense and defense. Uh, return almost as many starters as Tennessee is, and they're a well-coached team by Scott Satterfield. So expect them not to lay down. Most certainly, uh, Tennessee fans should not expect just because you know it's a Sun Belt team that they're just going to lay down and take it. So uh, expect a tough contest, uh, most certainly for the first half. But I think all in all, overall, Tennessee's talent level will show. Look, bottom lines here. Tennessee is the more talented team. Tennessee has a little bit deeper roster at the key spots and has the slight talent advantage in a few of the skill positions. But this App State team, they are very talented in their own right. They didn't go 11-2 and in their first year in the FBS because they got lucky, okay? A lot of people out there are overlooking App State a bit, I think, because they're from the Sun Belt team or it was their first year in FBS or they're App State. And you did mention a great point, Tanner, with the big, one of the biggest upsets in college football history with App State's win over Michigan in the big house. Well, we got a very big house right behind us. That doesn't mean App State's gonna pull off an upset, but App State, a very talented team. I think this game could be close, not only for the first half, but late into the game. But Jones has said all week long, week one means one thing. It's a game of a lot of questions and no guaranteed answers. You have to be prepared for anything. I think Tennessee's going to do some different stuff and some stuff you haven't seen them do in the past that can maybe keep this thing a little bit closer than people are expecting. So you both spoke about how these teams are definitely talented teams that are becoming into this weekend. But for the Mountaineers and the Volunteers, who are key players that we need to watch out for in this game? For the Mountaineers, it all starts with Marcus Cox, the running back. He's rushed for over 4,000 yards in his career. He is an excellent running back and honestly a running back that could start at probably a couple schools in the SEC or definitely several schools throughout the Power Five conferences. I think he was a little under-recruited coming out of high school and he definitely has proven he's a great running back. He has NFL potential, I think, and he's going to be a guy that will give the Tennessee defense some, has some hassles and some definitely question marks. I think Tennessee playing a little bit more aggressive style of defense under new defensive coordinator Bob Shoup. I think he's going to gash Tennessee's defense for at least two big plays, maybe three. I'm not going to say he's going to rush for 100 yards. I'm not going to say he's going to score the ball three or, or he's going to score three or four touchdowns, but he's going to get a couple of big runs guaranteed. And that's why I think the key players for Tennessee, it's two of them. And it's the sophomore defensive tackles of Shy Tuttle and Khalil McKenzie. They're both number two on the depth chart at the defensive tackle spots for our week one. With Shy Tuttle, it's all about seeing how healthy he is and how game ready he is. He's not going to be 100% coming back from that injury, but how close to 100% is he? How game ready is he? For Khalil McKenzie, okay, we know he lost a lot of weight in the offseason. That's been a key. How much more athletic is he going to look? How much more speed is he going to have? And has he finally shaken off some of that rust and made some of that leaps he needed to from missing his senior year of high school football and then stepping into the SEC as a true freshman? How far has he come? Because he could be a key to Tennessee's defense all year long. And, and, and Sam made, made a great point talking about Marcus Cox. And you got to look at my player of the game to, to watch for for Appalachian State is the quarterback for Appalachian State, Taylor Lamb. Uh, Taylor Lamb's coming off one of the uh, most efficient years, well, the most efficient year of his career, at, 30, at a ratio of 31 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. And uh, passing's not the only thing he's got. He's also very good at scrambling situations. He's not really a quarterback used kind of like Josh Dobbs is. They don't have too many design runs for him. But when the play breaks down, he definitely has the athleticism and the wheels to uh, make something out of nothing. I think you both are definitely right talking about Bob Shoup and the defense. That's definitely something Tennessee's going to have to 
key in on for this game against Appalachian State. But before we go into predictions for this matchup, let's look at some other matchups. First up, we have number one, Alabama, against number 20, USC. This is a very big game. What are your predictions for it? Well, it's taking place at at t Stadium, better known as Jerry World. It's it's going to be a star-studded event, pun intended. Uh, it might You might see one of the better games in that stadium this year because who knows what the Cowboys are going to be like with Tony Romo going down. <clears throat> but I just simply trust Alabama more right now than I do at do USC. And I'm still not sold that Hilton is going to be a great coach or the right fit for USC. I think Alabama rolls here 45-21. to 21. Yeah, To Sam's point, while it remains like uh, Hilton, you know, whether he's going to be a great coach or not, they have weapons everywhere. I just don't think with USC putting Max Brown there at quarterback, really, really inexperienced, Alabama's not the team to have your you know, debut against. So looking over at number five LSU against Wisconsin, do you see the Bayou Bengals coming out on top in this one? I definitely see LSU coming out on top in this one. And the key here, I think LSU is going to be one of the best teams in the nation throughout the season. And in part because they still have just as good of a defense as last year, but the offense is going to be more this year than just Leonard Fournette. Now, with that being said, Leonard Fournette is going to be the difference here. Leonard Fournette is going to run over Wisconsin. Tigers win, and I know Les Miles is against it, but I think Leonard Fournette probably gets flagged for a Lambo. <laughs> Yeah, I, he, he said he, he, anyone who tries to Lambeau Limb is going to get sent home. I don't know if Leonard Fournette does that. He's actually going to fulfill that promise. But anyway, sticking with the game, even though this is a de facto home game for Wisconsin at Lambeau Field, it's not going to make that much of a difference. LSU is going to be one of the most powerful teams in the country this year, going to compete for the SEC West with Alabama. You have what is almost draws on Hosman favorite and Leonard Fournette. It just... I mean, LSU is, uh, I'm sorry, Wisconsin is a very well coached team under Gary Anderson, but they just, what well, it comes down to, they don't have the weapons to contain Leonard Fournette. And most certainly, even, they're going to split the carries, I think. You know, let's see Darius Goss get a lot more touches. He had one of the best uh, average shorts per carry last year in the SEC. I see him utilizing a lot more. And it's also a bit of a homecoming for LSU, new LSU defensive coordinator David Randa, who just got hired from Wisconsin. So that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch there. But I think LSU may keep it close for the first half, but just Leonard Fournette's going to be too much in the second half. So for the first SEC-ACC matchup we need to cover, we have Georgia against North Carolina, number 18 against number 22. Who do you see coming out on top in this one? Okay, well, when I broke down this game, when I was breaking down Georgia's schedule earlier in the year, Three Point Sense Magazine, I said North Carolina would come out on top. In part because I didn't think either one of Georgia's top two running backs would be healthy. We now know Nick Chubb's going to play in this game. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to go with Georgia here. I'm going to say Georgia by a touchdown, 28-21, and it's going to be Nick Chubb that makes the difference. But it won't surprise me if the Tar Heels win this game. Yeah, I also think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a little higher score just for the fact that the defenses of both these teams are you know, most certainly the question marks of both of them. But at both offenses, you have absolutely dynamic running backs. We already know what we have in Georgia. Nick Chubb's going to come back. It remains to be seen whether he's going to be exactly what he was before his devastating injury. But I still think he's going to come back in good form. So give me Georgia, just off the top of my head, give me 38-35. So going to the next SEC ACC matchup we have, we have Ole Miss and Florida State. Definitely an exciting game to be looking out for. Who gets the W in this one? Well, you know, I want to do the seminal chop here, but with Florida State now starting a freshman quarterback. That makes me think the door opened up a little bit more here for Ole Miss. Instead of maybe a crack in the window, the doors now the door the, the front door of the house is cracked open. That being said, I'm still gonna take Florida State. I'm gonna take Florida State. 13 to 10 in a surprisingly low scoring game as both defenses make a few plays on a big stage. I don't think Ole Miss's defense has enough to contain who I think is another pretty underrated running back in Dalvin Cook, who could probably be a very well be the Hosmer winner when it's all said and done this year. Even though there were uh, concerns about Florida State starting DeAndre Francois at quarterback, the last registered freshman start quarterback for Florida State was James Winston. I'm not really comparing him there, but I think just with Dalvin Cook in the backfield, I think Florida State's going to be okay. For defense, uh, they have one of the best, Florida State has one of the best safeties in the country, Derwin James. I think he can end up giving Chad Kelly some fits, especially if the defense forces him into bad throws. So it's not going to be as defensive as Sam says because I do think we'll see a little bit of fireworks in this game. But give me Florida State 35 to 24. So before we move into the UT matchup, let's look at local high school. Five, six, eight, if you're looking at this early in the season, who gets the win? 
Well, there's one name to watch here, and it's T. Higgins, the Clemson commit. T. Higgins, he's explosive as can be. He's clearly the number one player in the state of Tennessee. And while I think Farragut is a good team, he's going to be too much for him to handle. Oak Ridge gets the win 28-7. to I'm going to agree with the same there just for a simple fact that it is T. Higgins. He is the number one X Factor in the entire game. Not only, you know what he can do in offense as a wide receiver, but Oak Ridge also likes to play on defense as a quarterback. On special teams, he makes plays in all aspects of the game. Farragut can give him, you know, they can try to contain him, but at the end of the day, he's just going to make too many plays. So give me Oak Ridge five out for the touchdowns. So Tennessee and Appalachian State here in Neyland Stadium on Thursday night. Who gets the win? Well, I said this could be a closer game than most people are expecting, and I'm going to say it is. Okay, Tennessee is going to experiment a lot, I think. I think Tennessee is going to try and see how different people fit in different packages. And I think that will make, be what keeps it close. Also, how talented App State is. Tennessee wins 38-21. I'm going to go ahead and get my prediction. I, I predicted 44 to 20 Tennessee, and it's going to be pretty close to the first half. Some people are probably going to act surprised by uh, how much of by Appalachian State gives in the first half, but people should be surprised for the points I mentioned earlier. They are one of the most well-coached teams in the country, most certainly up to the group of five schools from Scott Satterfield. They have great players on offense and player on defense. I forgot to mention the preseason Sun Belt Player of the Year and their linebacker John Wall. They are, like I said, returning several starters everywhere. Well coached team, like I said. It's going to be a good fight they're going to get in the first half, but at the end of the day, it's SEC talent, Tennessee versus Sunbelt talent and Appalachian State. It's going to be too much of a gap to overcome. And for what I said, the pass rush is going to be too much for Taylor Lamb to overcome in crucial downs. So give me Tennessee pulling away late third quarter. So Tennessee across the board here for Rock Solid Sports. This is Sam Foreman, Tanner Carson. I'm Danielle Whaley. Thank you for joining us again this week. Join us next week as we preview and give predictions for the battle at Bristol.